This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, third lecture on foreign exchange risk management. Um, the previous two lectures have been mainly talking about the different ways. Uh, but as I said in the last lecture, uh, there are two ways where you're actually expected to do the numbers. And the first of them is something called forward contracts. And what a forward contract is, is suppose I need to convert $100,000 in a month's time. Well, I can either do nothing and wait and see what happens to the exchange rate in a month's time, but then things are at risk. Alternatively, uh, I can ring the bank and the bank will quote me now a rate that will apply in a month's time. It is just a phone call. I moved countries and I needed to move money to buy a house. I just rang the bank and they said, how much money do you need transferring? And I told them. They said, when do you need to transfer it? I told them. And they said, well, we can either just book the transfer and it can be changed at whatever the exchange rate happens to be in a month, or I can give you a fixed rate now and we'll convert at that rate in a month, um, whatever's happened to the actual exchange rate, the spot rate. And so it's a rate quoted now, today, to apply to a fixed amount on a fixed future date. We don't convert any sooner. You know, today I make the phone call, they fix a rate. The conversion takes place in, on the future date, a month's time, or whatever I've told them. Uh, but it will be converted at the rate we've agreed as of today. To show you what I mean, look at example three. X is due to pay $200,000 in one month's time. And I did say earlier, assume that we are in the UK for all the examples, unless I say different. So we're in the UK, uh, we need to convert uh, to pounds, but it'll be in a month's time. The spot rate is the rate for converting today. Were we converting money today, it would be 1.482 to 1.4905. However, we're not going to convert today. We're going to convert in a month. But the bank has quoted me today a rate to apply in one month's time. And they've quoted 1.4910 to 1.4970. Well, if I agree to that quote, then we won't convert until one month. But in one month's time, we have to convert at the rate we've agreed today. And how much is it? It's 200,000. Uh, it's quoted dollars to the pound, so we'll divide by the relevant rate. And uh, since we're paying dollars, We'll need to buy dollars. Uh, we'll convert at the lower rate, 1.4910. And so 200,000 divided by 1.4910 is 134.138. And whatever happens to the actual exchange rate is completely irrelevant. This is fixed in one month's time. So it's easy. You know, all right, you need to know which rate to use. We dealt with all that in the first lecture. Uh, but a forward rate again. They quote the rate today to apply to a fixed amount on a fixed future date. And there's no risk at all. 
you know, all right, the actual rate in a month's time may be better, may be worse. Uh, but if we haven't done anything, it's risk, you know, we may gain, we may lose. Here, I'm guaranteed I'll pay exactly 134, 138 pounds. There is no risk, it's certain. Uh, the only downside, if you get the chance to mention it, uh, is that it is a fixed amount at a fixed date. So um, if it turns out that we need to pay it oh, in three weeks' time, or in five weeks' time, we've got a problem. Uh, or if the amount for some reason changes, we've got a problem. We have to convert at that rate on that much money in one month. You know, and if, suppose for some reason, I didn't need to make the payment. Well, it's too late. I'm going to have to convert. And, and I, we don't need those dollars, the $200,000. So then I'd have to convert back at the, um, whatever the exchange rate happened to be. So that's the downside. But if you're certain about um, the amount and the timing, then fine, there is no risk at all. Uh, let's do another one. Number four, this time we're going to receive 150,000 in three months time. Ah, the spot, 1.5326 to 1.535, the three month forward, well, the way they quote forward rates in the newspapers, instead of quoting an exact rate, as was the case in example three, they quote it as a difference from the spot rate. So the spot rate, if we're converting today, is 1.5326. to 1.5385, but again, instead of quoting this forward rate here for three months time, instead of quoting the exact rates, the papers quote it as a difference, the difference from spot. is 0.62 to 0.51, However, two things here. First of all, it's quoted in the smaller currency. That's what the C is. It's 0.62 cents to 0.51 cents. Well, 0.62 cents is 0.0062 dollars. And 0.51 of a cent, well, one cent is 0.01 dollars, 0.5 cents is 0 0.0051 dollars. So that's the first trick. The second is, well, the forward rate, that's the difference from spot. So the question is, to get the forward rate, are we going to add 62 or subtract it? Well, that's what the words at the end uh, mean. It says PUM, which stands for premium. I'll tell you afterwards what the alternative is. Well, premium makes it sound as though you add it. But in fact, I'll tell you why this is the case after. But if it's quoted at a premium, to get the forward rate, we subtract it from spot. And so, subtracting, before I explain why, 1.5326 minus 0 0.0062 gives us 1.5264. One point five three eight five minus point zero zero five one gives us one point five three three four, and there is the forward rate. Uh, now we'll use it on the example in a moment. Uh, but although it seems very silly, you know, subtract a premium when premium surely we add. The reason is that they're quoting 
the dollar at a premium, as though the dollar is strengthening. And if the dollar is strengthening, one pound will buy you fewer dollars. Now to think that we're in the middle of an exam um, is awkward. Just remember, uh, you subtract a premium. And the alternative, if they wanted you to add it, it would be quoted dis, which is discount. Uh, and if the forward rate is quoted as a discount, you add to spot. However, once we've got the forward rate, it's easy. We're going to receive $150,000. Oh dear. Here there are $1.5 to the pound, so we'll divide by the exchange rate. And here, because we're receiving money, we're going to be selling dollars to convert to pounds. We'll convert at the higher rate, 5334. So 150,000 divided by 1.5334, it would convert to 97822 to the nearest, I mean, do these to the nearest uh, whole number uh, when it's foreign exchange. Okay, now that's a bit messy. In fact, it's very unlikely these days that the um, examiner will quote it this way. He just could, because that's how it's quoted in the financial papers. Uh, and so to be safe, there we are. If it's quoted that way, remember, the difference is given in cents. So I'm zero, zero to make it dollars. And to get the forward rate, if it's quoted as a premium, you subtract from spot. If it's quoted a discount, you add to spot. Uh, but again, once we've got the forward rate, we would then have to convert uh, at that rate. We'd have to convert $150,000. It would have to be done in, what was it here, three months' time. And again, the same problem as before, you see, that's fine. But what happens if the customers like paying? What happens if they take four months to pay? Well, we have to convert the dollars in three months' time. Which would mean we have to buy some dollars just to be able to convert. Uh, and that's the downside. But provided we're certain of the amount and we're certain of the time, uh, no problem. All right, well, I said um, it would be unlikely of the examiner to quote it that way. However, what he has done, is what I've done in example five. In example five, Z is due to pay 200,000 in two months time, but the spot rate, which of course is no, uh, really of no relevance here because we're not converting at spot. He said it's 1.6550 plus minus 0018. Now the examiner has done this once or twice, and all it means is, you know very well that there are going to be two rates depending on which way you're converting. Well, the lower rate is 1.6550 minus 0.0018. The higher rate is 1.6550 plus 0.0018. So the two rates, 1.6550 minus 0 0.0018, 1.6532, uh, the higher rate, 1.6550, oh dear, 1.6550 plus 0 0.0018 is 1.6568. So it's just a one way he could give you the two rates. Now, all right, the spot rate is of no relevance here. We need the forward rate.
but in exactly the same way, the two month forward rate at 1.6623 minus 0 0.0020, so the lower rate is 1.6603, the higher rate 1.6623 plus 0 0.0020. Uh, 1.6643. So that's the rate they're quoting for converting in two months' time. How much are we converting? 200,000. We're paying 200,000. Well, again, it's 1.6 dollars equals a pound, so we'll divide by the relevant rate. And which rate will we use? We're buying dollars, we'll convert at the lower rate, which will give us the biggest cost. And so the cost in pounds one, two, zero, four, six, zero. And again, assuming we've agreed to that rate. Today, the conversion will take place in two months' time, uh, and the cost will be fixed to 120,460. Uh, just one thing: if he does quote it in this way in the exam, don't waste time, because appreciate. Since he just wanted to know how much we're we paying two months' time, if we go for a forward contract, the current spot rate was of no relevance. I only did that to explain. You don't waste time in the exam. Uh, secondly, the forward rate, I got both rates, but uh, you know, think ahead. Since we're paying money, we only needed that rate. We only needed the lower rate, 6623 minus 0 0.002. And so however quick it was, we didn't actually need to calculate the higher rate. Um, so it's actually a very, very quick question. You know, all right, there'd be two marks. But you've really got to be on the ball. You've got to be 100% certain about well, what forward rates are, but also which rate to use. You're not going to have one to waste time messing around saying, oh, shall I use this rate, shall I use that rate? Uh, anyway, I said there are two ways you could be asked, uh, as far as numbers are concerned, to hedge the risk. There's the first way, forward contracts. In the next lecture, I'll go through money market hedging.